2024 is a record year for elections. Globally, more voters than ever in history will head to the polls. From the US to India, across Africa, Europe and of course the UK, our experts take a look at 2024's biggest ballots as we ask how will this global year of the election shape the world? Well, let's kickstart this election explainer with the United States, surely the most high stakes election this year. From the Middle East to the front line in Ukraine and the democratic stability of the United States itself, all eyes will be here in America. And it is time to brace yourselves for some familiar faces because yes, it's Groundhog Day here. It seems as though we're hurtling into a Trump-Biden rematch and the result could mould not just America's future, but the world at large. It would be foolish right now to make any firm predictions about Donald Trump's chances. There are, after all, so many factors in the months ahead which could shift everything. Trump's court cases, Biden's age, another geopolitical shock. Any of those could change things fundamentally. And repeat after me, I, Donald John Trump. But what we can say is this, as Donald Trump tries to win again, the structures of American democracy and the Constitution itself are being put under almighty stress. The polls right now suggest a Trump-Biden rematch would be close. If Biden wins, well then prepare for chaos in America because Trump will surely claim again that it was stolen. How will society react to that? If Trump wins, well then the world will need to brace. As the old saying goes, when America sneezes, the world catches a cold. Well, the world already seems to have a cold. So what could a Trump return mean? Well, the Western alliance would be tested once again. But this time, would Donald Trump follow through on threats like leaving NATO? He says he will solve the Ukraine war in a day, but how? Capitulate to Putin, maybe? And what would that tell China about American defense of Taiwan? Listen to this on the campaign trail. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. So is this just Trumpian rhetoric? He doesn't really mean it, does he? People around him would check on his most controversial policies, wouldn't they? That's the thing. No one really knows. And Trump 2.0 would differ from the first term. He is no longer a novice. The Middle East raises some really interesting questions. Rarely do foreign policy issues play big in America's voters' minds, but this year is different. The war in Gaza presents big problems for Joe Biden with voters. You can either be on the right side of history or you can be on the wrong side of history. Biden's support for Israel's bombardment of Gaza has cost him at home. He needs the Arab American vote in swing states like Michigan. So what about Ukraine? Peace in 24 hours, says Donald Trump. But would that require him giving in to Putin and conceding him Ukrainian land in the east? When President Putin ordered his tanks to roll into Ukraine, he thought we would roll over. He was wrong. Even if Biden does beat Trump, the mood in America for supporting Ukraine is waning. And so expect some shift in American policy towards Ukraine either way, increasing the pressure on Europe and maybe the jeopardy too. So much is at stake in this, the most consequential of American elections. And at a time when this nation's global clout and global influence seems to be shifting so profoundly. As they like to say here, buckle up. Is it also going to be a general election year? Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, here in the UK, we're expecting an election. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has announced he intends to call it in the second half of 2024. It could be October, it could be November. So what could happen? Well, early polling suggests we'll see the first change of government in 14 years, with Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer predicted to be the next Prime Minister if the polls are right. But a lot could change between now and the election. Keir Starmer hasn't wasted any time setting himself up on the world stage as a leader in waiting. He's already met with leaders from Canada, France, Norway, Australia, Greece and Brazil, to name but a few. So what could a change in the governing party here in the UK mean for our global relations? 
Well, it isn't likely to bring any seismic shifts in certain areas of foreign and defence policy like support for NATO, Ukraine or relations with China. But what could it mean for our special relationship with the US? Let's talk about the, 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 the so-called, <laughs> in inverted commas, special relationship. It's been rumoured that Sir Keir's team has been working to strengthen his relationship with President Joe Biden. But some have questioned how well the PM in waiting would cope with the alternative alternative, the return of Donald Trump. The two certainly aren't natural bedfellows and it's hard to picture them reveling in that special relationship. We can't get to net zero without nature. And what about the UK's reputation as an international climate leader? Britain's election will likely turn the quest for net zero into a battleground. Can we turn to Sky? Can you honestly say, hand on heart, that none of the people you've spoken to today have brought up or raised any concern about the recent changes you made in green policy? Hand on heart, 100%, no. Under Rishi Sunak, the UK has made a number of U-turns on green policies, from granting new licences for oil and gas projects in the North Sea to delaying the ban on diesel and petrol cars. So is Starmer the greener choice? Well, it looks like he sees climate as more of a vote winner than Sunak. Should there be an election next year that we win, then we will play our full part on the international stage, obviously towards those net zero targets. He's vowed to reverse some of Sunak's climate rollbacks if he wins, although Starmer has already wobbled on his own pledge to invest up to £28 billion a year on low carbon industry. But if Starmer won, would he put his money where his mouth is? The Sky News scoop has shown the real Keir Starmer. He wants to return us into the EU, effectively. And let's touch briefly on Europe. It's unlikely a Labour government would dramatically change relations with the EU. But dealing with a pro-European party would likely be a welcome change for Brussels after often rocky relationships with an assortment of Tory PMs. But Starmer won't be reversing Brexit anytime soon. The former lawyer is cautious when it comes to the EU and has ruled out rejoining the single market. Irregular migration is a European challenge and it needs a European answer. Now let's take a look at the rest of Europe. From a host of national elections to voting for the European Parliament, the spotlight this year will be on war, migration and the rise of the far right. So clearly a lot to unpack there. Let's start with domestic elections. And what are we likely to see? Well, in some places, the far right has seen an upsurge in response to immigration, inflation and poor economic growth. Elections in Austria, Portugal, Belgium and Croatia will act as a barometer for their popularity, an indication of how the European political landscape may be shifting. Austria's election could be the most critical, with the far right expected to enter government after September's election, potentially as the largest party. That would follow recent far right successes in the Netherlands and Sweden. And that brings me on to the European parliamentary elections. The biggest cross-border elections will take place in June, with more than 400 million people expected to vote. And on pre-election voting... The elections decide who will represent EU citizens over the next five years, and their outcome has huge implications for the future of Europe. So what's at stake this year? With polls showing an increase in support for the far right in countries like Germany and the Netherlands, there's expected to be increased pressure around the migration debate. The EU is expected to receive over a million asylum applications this year. And some fear that far right gains could normalise more extremist ideologies across Europe, which typically include an anti-immigrant stance. I, I can't tell you that it, it was special meeting. We had dialogue. And now on to matters of war. What could a more right-wing European landscape bring, for example, for the war in Ukraine? Well, firstly, there's a risk of dwindling support. The EU has agreed on a 50 billion euro funding package for Ukraine, but not without resistance from Hungary's populist leader, Viktor Orban. He has no any reasons to block Ukrainian membership in EU. And I asked him, to tell me one reason. Ukraine needs Europe's support in the face of an emboldened Russia, and Vladimir Zelensky will be wanting to move forward with his bid to join the EU 
after they agreed to open membership talks. And now to Africa. The continent is bracing for a packed year of national elections, with at least 16 countries scheduled to cast their vote in 2024. Some elections will be competitive, and some will just be for show. So what are the main elections to watch and why? Elections in South Africa, Senegal and Ghana could reshape some of the continent's longest standing democracies, but they aren't without their controversy. President Macky Sall triggered Senegal's worst political crisis by postponing February's presidential elections. <laughs> A move called a constitutional coup by protesters and opposition leaders in a country once hailed as West Africa's healthiest democracy has since been overturned by the Constitutional Council. Je suis pour un processus inclusif, transparent et apaisé qui permette un passage de relais dans la douceur et dans la paix. And while Senegal waits to elect its first new president since 2012, increasingly large numbers of Senegalese migrants are making the dangerous journey to Europe. Could new leadership inspire them to stay? <laughs> Ghana's president Nana Akufo-Addo will also be stepping down after completing his second term in office. There's never been a more humbling moment in my life. And I thank you, the good people of Ghana, the presidential candidates are anything but new, with the current vice president and a former president competing for the top seat. Now let's talk about the main attraction, an election that marks 30 years since Africa's most iconic vote to date. South Africa's 2024 elections are set to be the tightest race since the fall of apartheid, the year that the ANC was historically voted in with Nelson Mandela at the helm. The African National Congress in this country represents the overwhelming majority of the people of this country. But now everyone is asking one question. Will the ANC lose its hold on power? This democracy has been able to demonstrate its resilience, its stability and its strength. The polls are suggesting that the ANC may receive less than 50% of the total vote this year. Its declining popularity over the last few decades has been fueled by corruption scandals, youth unemployment, persistent power cuts and soaring economic inequality. We today are sending a clear message that in this election we are in it to win it. But the ANC is still one of the oldest and most established political parties on the continent and there's uncertainty that the opposition vying for power will hold the same way internationally, especially as the BRICS bloc continues to expand as a counterweight to the global north. So what does this mean for Africa on the world stage? Global players have plenty of interests on the African continent, from resources to counter-terrorism to anti-migration efforts. But Africa's increasingly focused on solving its own problems through its partnerships. South Africa is leading the expansion of the BRICS bloc and the African Union joined the G20. Plus, we saw Rwanda capitalize off the UK's stumbling migration plan. It's fair to say that African leaders are taking far less of a supporting role with the West and turning more and more to Russia and China as they deal with their own internal power struggles. But power is still a fragile commodity here. And the question is, as always, will the people's choice be the winner? To all my fellow residents of this planet, I made a solemn place today. And let's not forget about India, the most populated nation in the world, will go to the polls in the next few months to choose their government and prime minister. But Narendra Modi is seen by most as a shoo-in for the win there. And with Bharti Janta Party sweeping three state elections in December, he's already declared this hat-trick has guaranteed the 2024 victory. At the moment, opposition parties do not pose a strong or a serious challenge either. Centennial India will also exceed your expectations. Now, India may be the world's largest democracy, but just how democratic is it? Modi has been accused of using government agencies to clamp down on political opponents, eroding the independence of the judiciary, preventing press freedom, and stoking anti-Muslim sentiments. So the fear amongst his critics is that his victory, albeit within a free election, would allow him to bring in policies which undermine democratic institutions. So 
2024 could be critical for the future of India's democracy and critical for its relations with the West. That's what this trip is all about. Having India cooperate much more with the United States, be closer to the United States. America especially seems to view India as an ally when it comes to limiting China's influence. <laughs> the two share a vital interest when it comes to stopping China from dominating Asia. It's not about containing China, it's about having a stable base. And while we are on China, aside from acting as a counterbalance for the other nation's interests, India has its own priorities to think about there. Relations between the two countries have been strained since 2020's deadly clashes between troops along the Himalayan border they share. Although in a rare face-to-face -face meeting in South Africa last year, Modi and China's President Xi agreed to intensify efforts to de-escalate border tensions. Three, two, one. Zero. Lift off normal. India has clearly arrived as a global leader, and its oh, recent moon landing has only elevated its status. So, as India's influence grows, its foreign partners will be wanting to harness that power. At the same time, its Western allies wouldn't want to be seen to overlook aspects of Modi's leadership, which could call democracy into question. So there you have it, with over 50 countries taking part in this worldwide vote-a-thon, 2024 is going to be a gigantic year for global politics. We could see shifts in support and ideologies around warfare, migration, the climate crisis, and on a wider scale, a question around democracy itself. So as over 4 billion people head to the polls, which way will you be voting?